Hello again. Um, I see a few questions if um, we're here and we are. Uh, we're just waiting for it to turn 10. Might even give people, well, I'll just introduce, do a long version of an introduction, let people join in. Nice to meet you, everybody. Um, I also see a question if there will be a recorded uh, version of this. We are recording it um, and we'll <laughs> figure out how to share that um, after we wrap up today. So, like I said, I'll do a little bit of introduction just so more people have a chance to join, but um, I want to welcome everybody to our webinar. Um, we're really excited to show you how to turn all your ancestry data into a family history book. Um, this is our first webinar, so we're really excited to have you guys all here um, and learning with us today. Um, I see quite a few folks, looks like there's 150 people here. So um, we're extra excited and maybe a little bit nervous, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and we are really um, proud of our book building process. So we're super excited to show it to you today. Um, a little bit about my canvas. Like I said, my name is Laurel Link. Maybe I didn't say that, but my name is Laurel. It's really nice to meet you guys. Um, and I'm here with a bunch of the folks on the My Canvas team. And our mission at My Canvas is to bring people together. That's the short version. The kind of longer version is that we help bond generations by turning your family history into art, books, and gifts that bring your past into the present. Um, we are able to do this through our exclusive partnership with Ancestry.com, um, which means that we are able to connect directly to your Ancestry account and pull all of your data onto our website to make books and posters, um, which you'll see comes really in handy when you're making a book with a lot of family members information in there. Um, but also it is a partnership. We're not part of ancestry.com. Um, so we're not uh, owned or operated by them. We're not part of their giant team. We're actually kind of a small team um, that is just passionate about turning all of that data that you collect on their site into something tangible that you can share with your family. Um, you, some people have been using my campus website for a long time, um, have probably noticed um, a couple years ago when we had to redo the entire website. This was because uh, Adobe, the software company that uh, we were using to like build how our entire website worked. We used a, a platform called Flash and Adobe announced that they were no longer supporting that um, and wouldn't allow websites to continue that were built with that software. So we had to rebuild all of my canvas. So that's why some of you may have noticed a big change and that we're slowly building back um, a lot of the features that were available on the old website um, and constantly adding new features. So we thought it would be a good idea to have this webinar um, to teach folks if they're new to the site or have been around a long time, um, how our current features work and just the easiest way to put together a beautiful book. Um, so that's what we're gonna go through today, how to get started, connect your Ancestry account, pull in all of the data that you want and how to make your book look extra beautiful. Um, we hope that you'll learn a few tips and tricks that'll help you build the book that uh, you've been waiting to make and share with your whole family. Um, so that's a bit about my canvas. Um, as part of this opening introduction, we want to get to know a little bit about all the folks that are here watching the webinar. So we're going to do a quick poll. Um, you'll see a poll button, a uh, poll window rather, um, pop up and ask you a quick question. Um, and you have, you know, about a minute or so to answer. We're just wondering, curious, if you've ever... Um, made or ordered a project on my canvas before. Um, we're just trying to gauge, have you ever made a poster? Have you made a family history book before and you're just looking for some new tips? Have you made a family history calendar or something else on our site? We also have um, wall art, a few different ways to just print your family photos. Um, or maybe you're completely new and you've never printed anything. So we'll give you about a few more seconds to click a button if you want to. And then we'll be able to see the results of everyone who's here. All right, my window closed. Oh, all right, here's 
the results. Um, this is amazing. It's really cool to see that. See, it looks like 16 folks who answered the question have made a poster. 25 folks have made a book before. Um, and we even have someone who's made a family history calendar. That's I love our family history calendars. So um, I'm excited to see that somebody here has made one. Uh, yeah, you should check them out. A um, couple of folks have ordered something else and the vast majority, 73% of you guys have not placed an order yet. So um, I'm glad that we can help you out. And uh, Meg can, oh, I'm gonna introduce my colleague Meg in a minute. She can um, make sure that her instruction is very uh, clear for everyone who's never really interacted with our site a ton before. So I'm excited to see that. Um, as I just mentioned, Meg, I am not the only one here from my canvas today. Um, a few of my colleagues are also here in this webinar and they're waiting to answer your questions. So if you have any questions while we're talking today, if you look at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see um, a little symbol that says Q&A under it. If you click on that, a little uh, window will open where you can type in any question and someone from our team, it might be Caitlin or Jasmine or Janelle, um, will answer your question uh, just as you ask it. So. We do ask that you keep your questions related to what's going on in the webinar and the book building process. Um, if you do have a question specific to an order you've placed or um, something that's happening maybe just in your book specifically, um, you can use the contact link at the bottom of our website um, or we'll give an email address at the very end if you have specific questions you don't wanna share um, in the Q&A with everybody. But that is available. Um, and at the end, we'll kind of go over some of the most popular questions that popped up. I do see a question from someone named Laurel. Hey, there's another Laurel on this webinar. That's pretty fun. <laughs> I don't meet a ton of Laurels around. Um, all right, so now that I've explained the, uh, the Q&A box, you guys know how to um, ask some questions. I think I'm gonna hand it over to, for the bulk of the demonstration to my colleague, Meg who runs operations around here on my canvas. And if um, the handful of you that have printed a family history poster, Meg, uh, there's a good chance that Meg helped print that out and roll it up and ship it safely to your house. You may have also interacted with her before. If you've ever watched any of our helpful YouTube videos, uh, Meg is the friendly voice on there with all the tips and tricks. Um, so now she's gonna pop on here and teach us how to build an ancestry book. Awesome. Thank you, Laurel. Um, if we could have the introduction slide stop sharing, I will share my screen once that has ended. All right. I am now sharing my screen and we should be looking at the My Canvas homepage. Um, so today, like Laurel said, I'm going to walk through some key features of our family history book builder and share some tips and tricks with you that'll hopefully help you build an awesome piece of family history that you can look back on. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're starting to build any project is log in. So in order to do that, you'll head up to the upper right hand corner where there's a login button and you're going to select the login with ancestry button here. This will then connect right to ancestry. You'll type in your credentials and choose sign in. This will make sure that moving forward, you have been successfully logged in with your Ancestry account and will be pulling the correct data for you for any of your projects. So I'm ready to begin my projects and to get to the family history book, I'm going to head to the products section and then choose Ancestry family history. You can see all of our Ancestry products here, as Laurel mentioned, posters and calendars, but I'm gonna choose family history book. When you're on this page, you'll be offered a few choices before you start building your book. So the first choice you can make is what size of book you'd like. And we offer two different sizes, an 11 by eight and a half inch book or a 13 by 10 inch book. And the 13 by 10 inch book does offer 40% more room per page. So you've got lots of extra space for records and photos. Um, and so once you've chosen what size you'd like, you also need to choose your cover. So you can choose between a custom photo cover, which you can see on my screen right now. You'll be able to add a photo and a title, or you can choose between a vegan leather option. And we have that in either black or tan. And here's what those look like. 
And each uh, leather book does come with a gold foil title um, and you can customize that to whatever you'd like. Uh, our books include 20 pages per book, but you can add up to 350 pages. So there's lots of space for um, everything you could think to add. So now that I've um, chosen, I'm gonna do a black leather 13 by 10 book. I'm gonna select continue. And then I'm going to select start a new creation to begin building my book. The first thing you'll want to do is choose who you'd like to be in your family tree. Uh, or choose which family tree you'd like to use. So I'm going to choose the Hamilton family tree. Um, and then today I'm making a standard book. So I um, will choose a starting person and then the number of generations uh, behind that starting person that I'd like included in my book. You can choose up to seven generations, but I'm going to choose four for my book today. And then I'm going to select my starting person by typing in the name of the person that I'd like to add. And I'm going to add Philip A. Hamilton to my book. Once I've selected all those items, I'm going to hit preview my creation. You may see a box pop up if you're working on multiple drafts or coming back to a project um, that it'll say that we have data for this person from a previous project, but if you've made any changes to your ancestry account since you've last edited a project, you're able to refresh that data by choosing this option and it will pull in any changes you've made in your Ancestry account now into the book you're creating. So I'm going to choose that and hit continue. And you'll see a little window that says building your project. It pulls all of the information that you've identified here and creates you a book. So as you can see here, we are now in the book editor. And the first thing you'll want to do is save and create a name for your project. So I'm going to name mine Hamilton Demo and then choose the Save button. And now that will ensure that any changes I make to this project will be saved under this draft name. And um, I can access that in the future. Now, scrolling down through my book, you can see that we've automatically generated for you a table of contents, a family tree, there's my starting person of Philip, um, and we also generate a timeline and a family group sheet for every person in your tree. And that's automatically populated into your book. Um, so while the book that we generate for you has a lot of great information, there are a few types of pages that we don't automatically add for you. So I'm gonna show you how to add those pages to your book. Um, I'm going to begin by adding a record page to my book. And to do that, I'll head up to the upper right-hand corner and choose this add to book button. Here you can see all the types of pages you're able to add to your book from blank, another timeline, a family group sheet, but I'm gonna choose add record pages. I can either type a person by name or I can choose from someone in my book. I'd like to add more records about Alexander Hamilton. So I'm gonna choose that person right here for, for adding records. Um, you can choose as many people at a time that you'd like to look for records and add to your book. So for now, I'm gonna choose Alexander and Elizabeth Hamilton. Once I have them selected, I'm going to choose records. And then a list of all the records for both of these people that are linked to my Ancestry account will populate on the page. And you can, again, select as many records per person as you'd like to add to your book. So I'm gonna select a few for Alexander Hamilton by clicking on them, and I'll select a few here as well. And once I've selected the record pages I'd like to add, I'll choose Add Record Pages, and these will be populated into my book. The nice thing about adding record pages for a person already in your book is that they will populate right after the timeline page. So I can see Alexander Hamilton's timeline page. And when I scroll down a little more, his record pages are added right in his section in order. The next type of page I'd like to add is a photo page. I know I have some photos in my Ancestry account for Alexander Hamilton that I think would be great to have in my book. So I'm going to once again choose add to book. 
and then I'm going to select add photo pages. Once again, I can search for a person or choose someone from in my book. I'm going to select Alexander Hamilton and hit choose photos. Here I can see all the photos connected to him in my Ancestry account. I'm going to select them both and add the photo page. And now I can see that both of these photos have been added into my book right after my record pages. So this is a great way to just add more information about all the people in your book, uh, special photos to look at, and some, some additional things. Um, I've decided though, I don't think I want this photo of King's College in my book anymore. So I'd like to delete this page. It's very simple to delete a page from your book. All you need to do is head down to this bottom toolbar underneath the specific page you, you'd like to delete and choose the delete button. You'll be asked to confirm just to make sure you don't accidentally push that button. I'm gonna confirm and I can see that that has been removed from my book. I would also like to move this photo page that I've added to a little bit earlier in the middle of the record pages I've added. So in order to move a page in your book, you'll choose the move button at the bottom of the page and you'll see a pop-up where you can choose what number page you'd like it to be added to. I'm gonna move this to page eight and then I'll select the move page button. And I can see here that my photo has been moved to page eight and it's in the middle of my records that I've added. The final type of page I'd like to add is actually adding a person. So I'm going to add a few pages for one person that's not currently in my book. In order to do that, I'm going to again, choose add to book. And instead of adding a page, I'm going to choose add people and add a person. So I know this person isn't in my book, so I'm going to search for this person by name. And you'll type the name in and you'll see what is populated. I'm going to choose James Alexander Hamilton as well as Eliza Hamilton. And by choosing these people, the timelines in family group sheets will be automatically added into my book for these people. And I will select add pages and it will pull that information from my Ancestry account and build it right into my book. It will add a new person to the end of your book. And here I can see a family group sheet as well as two timeline pages. A common question that we get about um, adding pages are if, uh, is if your pages will be added to your table of contents automatically or if you'll need to go back through and add that. So I'm gonna scroll back up and show you that anytime you add a new page using the add to book button, it will show up in your table of contents. You can see here that um, the pages for James Hamilton have been added in order at the end of my table of contents, as well as all the record pages that have been added um, for Alexander Hamilton. And I will show you in a little bit how you can edit the table of contents to make those record pages even more specific. So we've kind of covered all of the information about adding pages to your book and really getting all the information into your book. So if you have any questions so far, again, drop those in the Q&A section and our folks will get those questions answered for you as we go. So once you've added, again, all those record and photo pages that you want to have, you can go through and edit the individual pages to make them just what you want. Uh, one of the main things that folks most want to edit within a book is a um, block of text or, or words that are on your page. So I'm gonna show you how to edit text on an existing page. And I'll start by choosing the edit button underneath the page that I would like to edit. So when I select that, I'm then taken into the book, the page builder editor in our book builder. So the first thing you'll notice is this pink border around your book page. This is what we refer to as our bleed zone, and this will not print on your book. It's just a tool for you to use to know if something is going to be in danger of getting cut out or bound in your book within the printing process. So that is um, just something we have as a tool 
Um, you can see here that this box of text, while the text box is in the pink area, the text itself is not, so that is not in danger of getting cut off. In order to edit text on your page, you want to double click on whatever box of text you're looking to edit, and you'll see a flashing cursor. You're then able to type something new and use your keyboard to um, add whatever you're looking to add, change information, um, reformat things, whatever you're looking to do. Um, just you can type it in there and change it up. Um, we also get questions on how to uh, expand your text box. So if you need more room, um, for example, I would like this British Virgin Islands to be all on one line. So if I'd like to make this text box bigger, I'll select the text box, hold my mouse over this little white box, click and drag to make the text box wider. And here I can see that my text is now all on one line. Another thing you can do for formatting your text is change the justification of the text. So you can use this white toolbar with your text selected and you can choose from a center alignment, a right alignment or a left alignment. Um, there are several other things you can do to change the style of your text as well. And anytime you're making a change to a block of text, you'll want to make sure it is selected with this blue box around it. I'm first gonna change the color of my text by using this text color picker. Make it purple so it's nice and bright for us to see. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is use this font size selector to make my text a little bit bigger. Um, and you can use these arrows to change the size larger or smaller. And the final thing that I'd like to edit using this toolbar is the style of my font. So you can use this drop down and choose from a library of fonts that we offer. And I'm going to choose a more bold text to uh, have on my page. So as you can see, I've, I've changed how this text looks on my page. And one other thing to know about um, editing your text on a page is that you can duplicate elements of your text. So if I wanted to add another timeline event to my page, it's very simple to do that. You simply select the item that you'd like to duplicate, and then you'll head up to the upper right-hand corner of your white toolbar and choose the Duplicate Elements button. And I can see another box of text has been added. And this is really great for if you've really perfected a style that you like and you wanna use it again without going through all the steps of changing it, changing the color, changing the style, you can duplicate and then double click to edit your text. And you can also use that duplicate button to duplicate the line for the timeline event. So I'm going to show you that now. Again, I'm gonna choose that button. I'm going to click and drag on the line. And then I can also resize using the same um, trick that we use to resize our text box. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And now I, I've added another timeline element to my page. So I've done editing text for now on this page and I'm going to exit this page by choosing done in the upper right hand corner. Um, to show you the remaining features that you can use to edit a page, I'm going to start with a brand new blank page. And in order to add a blank page to your book, you'll again use that add to book feature and choose add blank page. Your new blank page will appear at the very end of your book. And you can again, choose the edit button at the bottom of the page to go in and edit that page. So now that I'm here, I can see a plus sign, uh, which is signifying a title of your page. In order to edit that title, you're going to double click until you see a flashing cursor. And then you can type whatever you'd like your title to be. And when you're adding a page and adding a title, it's important to be specific because that is what will appear in your table of contents. So I'm going to label this maps. Um, I'd also like to add a subtitle to my page. And in order to add a new box of text, I'm going to head to the text toolbar in the left-hand side. Here I can add several different 
types of text, but I'm gonna choose subtitle. It'll appear on my page and it already has a blinking cursor. So I can type a subtitle here um, and whatever I'd like that to say. Then I can click and drag to move it. And you'll see a, a little blue dotted line, which is a, a tool to help you center. And once you've got it where you'd like it, you can let it go and you've added a subtitle. Another thing that you can um, add to your blank page is a photo from your existing photo library. So I'm gonna head over here to the photos section on the left-hand side, and I'm going to look for the photo I'd like to add to my page. Once I found the photo I'd like to add, all you have to do is click on it and it will be added to your page. I can see here that there's a blue box around my photo, so I'm able to edit the photo right away. Um, and you can use that same resizing tool that we used when editing text by hovering our mouse over the white box, clicking and dragging to make it smaller or bigger. You can also use this top toolbar to edit your photo in a few different ways. One of which would be to add a border to your photo. And in order to add a border to your photo, you'll select the color of border you'd like, and then increase the thickness until you see the border become the size you'd like it to be. As you can see, a red border is being added around my photo. In order to remove the border, you'll just make the thickness zero and it will disappear from your photo. Another thing that you can do is change your photo to have rounded corners by using this rounded tool. As you can see, I now have an oval shaped photo instead of a square, but you can flip back and forth using these tool, tools up here in the top toolbar. Uh, another common question we receive is how do I make this a perfectly circle photo rather than an oval. And in order to do that, you will use the crop tool. So when you select the crop tool, you'll see that your screen turns gray and you have a, a toolbox around your photo. So you're gonna wanna drag the corners of your photo and make your photo as close to square as you can get it. Um, and having a square photo will make it so that your photo becomes a circle when you round it. So it's important to crop it square first. So once I've made my crop, I'll choose done to save the crop. And then I will select the rounded corner option. And you can see my photo is now a perfect circle. I would like to keep my photo as a square though. So one other way that you can undo a change you've made is by using this undo arrow in the top toolbar. And that puts my photo back to how I just had it. Um, if I didn't want to save my crop and I wanted to go back even further, I can choose the undo again and it will take me back on the changes that I've made. Um, another uh, thing that I would like to add is a photo that's from my desktop computer. So it's not in my tree already. It's not in my book. I, it's just a photo I have that I'd like to add into my library. So in order to do that, I'll continue in the photos section and I will choose this upload photo button. Then I'm going to browse for the file on my desktop and I will select it to be added into my library. And now I can see that this map I wanted to add <clears throat> has been added into my photo library. In order to add that to my page, I will just click on the map it will appear much larger than it sh than you might want it to be. So you can again use that resizing tool in order to change the size of it. And you can click and drag on the map to move it around at any time. I'd also like to add a border to this map. So I'm going to do that using the border tool and make it purple so we can see it and make it a little thicker. So now you can see I've added a border to that map. One other thing that you can import onto your page is a record right from your Ancestry account. So we did add records, record pages earlier in this um, process, but I'd like to add a specific record to this page. So I'll do that by heading to the Ancestry button. And here you have access to every person in your um, tree 
So I'm going to choose Alexander Hamilton and all of his media and records will appear. So it might take a few seconds to pull all that information, but once it appear, has appeared on your page, you can select whatever record you'd like to add. So I'm going to add this record here. Again, it appears a little bigger than I need it to. Um, and I actually uh, would like it to be a, only the right side of the page. So I'm going to show how to crop this record. Um, and you'll do it the same way that we just did using this crop tool. And I'm just going to drag it in. So I only have the right side of that document visible. And I'll choose done to save my changes. And now I can see that uh, my record has been cropped. I'm going to adjust this text box here because it's getting cut off, but I'd like that information to be visible. And I'm going to move it up a touch. So once you've added the pieces of information, you can kind of start moving stuff around, changing the sizes, adding the flourishes like borders. Um, we also have an entire library of embellishments that you can add to your pages for a little bit of extra flair. Um, to add those, you can head to the embellish section on the left-hand side. And here you can see a very big library of all sorts of embe embellishments, letters, tags, flags. Um, but one thing that is kind of fun to be able to add is something called a highlighter. And you can use this to call attention to something specific on your page. So I'm gonna select the highlighters category within embellishments, and I'm gonna choose a blue highlighter. It's much bigger than I need it to be, so I'm going to resize it down to a smaller size, click and drag to move it where I'd like it on the page. And I wanna highlight this um, section of text here on the page. So I'm gonna leave that highlighter there. I'd also like to add a frame around this photo. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to the embellishments and search for frames. Here I can see a whole library of different frames that I can add to my photo, but I'm gonna choose this first frame. Again, I'm going to resize it to get closer to the size of the photo. And then I'm gonna drag it just right over top and I can resize it a little more and move it just how I need it. Now this is getting covered, so I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Um, and I really like the way that this frame looks. And in the future, I'd like to access this frame for other pages. So we have a pretty cool feature uh, for favoriting uh, embellishments and photos and page backgrounds that you'd like to use again. So in order to favorite, an embellishment, you'll hover your mouse over top of the embellishment and click this heart in the upper left-hand corner. Then if I head to my favorite section, I can see in the embellishments tab that my frame is there and I'll be able to access that throughout my project anytime I wanna come back to it. And the last thing that I'll show you how to update that you can change on your page is the background. So you can do that by heading to the background section and again, we have a large library of backgrounds you can choose from. And you can choose to add the background on only this page or all pages by using this button at the top of the background section. But I'd like to add the background to only this page. So I will scroll through here and see if there's a background that I prefer. I'm gonna try this one. And in order to add a background, you'll just click on it and it automatically replaces through. So you can see here, my background has been updated. I like this background a lot, so I'm gonna favorite that as well. And now my background is saved in my favorites category on the left-hand side. So I think this page is, is pretty much done for what I wanted to add to it. And so I'm gonna choose done in the upper right-hand corner. And then, um, it's been added to my book. I can see the changes reflected here in the book editor. Uh, one thing I wanted to circle back around to and touch base on is editing that table of contents. So I'm gonna go here to my table of contents. I'm going to choose the edit button. And then in order to edit anything on the table of contents, you just double click again till you see that flashing cursor 
and you can add whatever you need. And your changes will save in your book by choosing that done button. So we've gone through uh, quite a few tips and tricks in the page editor and the book builder. I'm going to um, save this one more time to make sure all my changes have saved. And I'm going to send it back over to Laurel to talk through a few things. Thanks, Meg. Um, so now that you've learned how to start your book, import your data, make it look just like you want, um, I'm going to show you some real samples we have of some books um, before Meg shows you kind of just the last few steps for checking out and sharing um, your project. Back up, I'm in a little sun puddle, I think. Um, so this is an 11, and a half, or 11 by eight and a half size family history book with the custom photo cover. Um, the photo is printed directly onto the cover. Um, you can change the title, like Meg showed the editor, a lot of the things you could do on one of those blank pages you could do on your cover um, to make it look just how you like. Um, all of our books have very high quality uh, photo paper on the inside. Um, when we were, I'll show you another cover. <laughs> this is the uh, vegan brown leather. So vegan leather just means that it's a synthetic leather. leather. It's not made from cowhide, um, but it does have the texture of leather um, and this beautiful brown color. And in the leather options, faux leather options, uh, you can print a gold title uh, similar to the custom photo cover. You can customize it, uh, change the words, the size of them, what it says, and we'll put it in gold foil right there on the front. Um, the, this one also high quality <laughs> photo pages on the inside. Um, with all your records, it prints and pretty high resolution. So it's very legible. Um, and when we were choosing materials for this, we definitely chose things that will last uh, for generations. So this is archival quality ink inside. Even the binding, we chose glue that's made you know, to last forever. We don't want pages falling out when your grandkids, great grandkids are um, looking through to see uh, just where they came from. So. There's my grandma, do you see a resemblance? Do we look the same? I don't know. I think we do a little actually. Um, and then the last option after the photo and the brown leather, we also have black uh, vegan leather, which is really nice and also features the gold uh, stamp title. You might notice this is the bigger size. This is 13 by 10. I can uh, put them right next to each other for you. Like Meg said, it's about 40% bigger. So you can either just add even more information to every page or the font is just gonna look bigger and be a little bit easier to read um, in these bigger books. You kind of fit some more information, more photos um, on every page. So those are the three options and we're gonna do another poll. So um, my colleague Sunny is gonna pop up a window <laughs> uh, magically for you to, we're just curious to see what is your favorite. Do you like the black leather? the uh, brown leather or the photo cover. Here's one more example of a photo cover in the big size um, where they've added a simple cute family photo and their name on the front. They're super customizable, the photo ones. So um, I'm excited to see what you guys think <laughs> you might like to print someday, which is your favorite. I'll give you just a few more seconds to answer. And then when the poll ends, we can we'll all see the results together. <laughs> While you guys are answering, I can also show you that, um, I'll talk a little bit about the packaging. I don't have any with me because I made some of these books a long time ago, but they do come wrapped um, in tissue paper with a beautiful My Canvas sticker in nice packaging. And there's no um, invoice or pricing information inside. So you can just wrap it right up if you're giving it for a gift. Um, and if you'd like to ship it directly to someone, we do have um, gift card options, just like note, gift note options. So you can um, type a note, um, whatever you wanna say, and choose from a few different styles. We'll put it um, into a nice white envelope for you and stick it right in with the book. So you can ship it directly to a family member for the holidays or for a family anniversary, um, whenever you wanna gift a book like this. So I think we'll have those poll results in just a second. Let's see, ooh, it's pretty evenly split. We got the, um, 
the black leather just beating out the tan leather by a few votes. And then the custom photo cover with 42% um, is the winner. It is the most versatile. Um, so I think they're all great options. It's no losers in that bunch. It was pretty even, evenly split. <laughs> so now I'm gonna send it uh, back to Meg to show us just the last few things you'll do after you finish perfecting your family book. Thanks, Laurel. So we stepped away from our project. We saved it. We went and you know learned about photo books for a minute. Um, so when you're ready to order your project um, and you've made all of your changes, you'll want to um, head back into that project in order to add it to your cart. And you'll do that by selecting my projects on the homepage. And you'll see all the creations that you've made um, in the past. And in order to get back to your creation, you'll find what you named it and you'll hit edit creation. And then you are back into the editor. So this is one last chance to make any changes you need um, and fix anything else before you send your book to print. So I'm done with this book. So I'm gonna choose add to cart, um, but it does look like I'm getting a warning and this will happen if you have anything in your bleed zone. So it's showing me I have an error on page 23. So let's go take a look. Okay, here's page 23. I'm going to choose edit. And it doesn't look to my eye like there's anything in this pink box. So I think I'm okay, but I'll show what's causing that error. We do have um, a bit of a bug we're working through where sometimes your blue text box will extend into the bleed zone and it will trick our system into thinking that you have text on the bleed zone. So if you see that there's no text, then you're good to go. You can just ignore that error and keep moving. Um, if you'd like to get rid of the error, you can just reduce the size of the text box. And since I've done that, I'm going to hit done. And then when I choose add to cart, I can see that that error is gone. You're also going to get a pop-up that asks you to make sure that you've carefully reviewed your project um, because once we send your project to the printer, we are unable to make any changes since it is a custom product. So just check for spelling, accuracy, any of that uh, kind of information. Um, once you've done that, you'll select this box and you'll add it to your cart. Here's your cart. It'll show anything that you've added. So if you have uh, several other products that you'd like to add, you can add them all to your cart before you check out. But I'm just going to continue with this one book. Um, here you'll add your shipping information. Um, if you're in a different country, you'll choose your country from this drop dropdown. Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, there is a box for the gift note that Laurel showed earlier. So um, you can choose the checkbox. And then here's the three design choices by selecting this three dots here you can choose. Um, and then you just type in your message. Um, that will automatically save, so you don't need to choose save or anything. You can choose between standard shipping or express shipping, which is a little bit faster. Um, if you have a gift card that you've been given, um, you can enter it here, and then you'll enter your payment information. Then you would just hit place your order here and you'd be taken back to the home screen and you'll get a confirmation email uh, that your order's been placed. So your order is placed, it's on the way, um, but you don't have to wait until you get your order in order to start sharing it. Um, we know that you spend a lot of time making your books really special. And so you can easily share those with your friends and family before you even get your book. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, in order to share your project, you'll head to my account and then you'll choose orders. And under orders, you'll see everything you've ever ordered with my canvas. Um, and so I'm going to select this most recent book that I've made. And if you hit show detail, you'll see a few buttons here. Um, in order to share your creation, you'll choose this share creation button. And then you'll see a few options that you can fill in. So I'm going to fill in a title. 
I'm going to say that the author is me, Meg, um, and then I'm going to write a description. Hope you enjoy this history book. I will select the update details button, and that will make it so that these details will be visible to whomever I share this with. Um, and then down here, you'll see there's a link that you can just choose the copy link button, and then you can paste it into an email or a text message um, and share it with whomever. Uh, you can also see what that looks like by selecting this preview button. And here you can see uh, a page that this is what anyone you share it with will see. You'll have your title, who it's created by, and the message that you wrote. And then you can use this um, tool down here to slide through the book and take a look at the pages. So it's a really cool feature that we have for you to share it easily. Um, and another great thing about this share feature is that if you're sharing it with a sibling or a grandchild and you want to give them the opportunity to order their own copy, they can add your project right to their cart and just head right to the checkout page um, without having to change anything. It's just ready to go. And you also have a share code here that if your recipient chooses to use this code, they'll get $10 off their order. And you'll also get $10 off your next order at my canvas. So it's a nice sharing feature that we have for you. And then two other buttons I wanted to talk about. In the cart, if you head here, there's also an add to cart button and a continue with creation button. So the add to cart button is a really easy way for if you want to order a duplicate of your project without changing anything, you can select add to cart and just check out right away. No questions asked, it'll send you another copy of the same project. But if you need to make a change to your project, um, say you want to update the title for someone else, you can hit continue with creation. And right from your cart, it will create you a new draft. You can resave it with a new title and then make any edits you need, add it to your cart and check out with a duplicate version um, of the project you already made. So that is everything I have for today. I'm going to stop my sharing and send it back to Laurel for Q and A. Thanks Meg. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of your guys' questions in the Q and A box and our team has been answering quickly as they can. It looks like we've answered quite a few, but there are still some open questions. But Meg and I just wanted to address um, some of the common questions that have been coming up. A few people have asked them, so we thought there might be more folks out there um, wondering or who haven't filled out the Q&A. Um, and I'd also like to say we are going to, um, when we're done, we will continue answering questions in the Q&A for a while after we stop the video and the audio. So if your question isn't answered, just hold on, we will get to it. Um, and I'll also share an email address at the end. If you have more questions later, um, you, we're happy to answer them anytime. But one of the common questions that we saw a few people asking um, is, can you add multiple photos to one page? Make sure how to add a photo page um, and it put you know each photo on its own page. So Meg, is there a way to add more than one photo? Yes. Um, in fact, on my blank demonstration page where I was showing you where I added a photo of Alexander Hamilton and a photo of a map, that was an example of adding two photos to a page. One of them was just a map. So in order to add multiple photos to your page, you just click on as many photos as you'd like to add, and they'll add into your blank page that you started. So thank you. And then um, one question that came up kind of a lot is people are wondering if they have more than seven generations that they'd like to add to the book. Um, you can only start with seven and the timeline page displays up to seven, but is there a way to add more generations in? Yes, there is a way to add more generations and you can do that with the add to book feature. Um, and so I talked about adding a person uh, into the tree. So you can use that add a person feature to add additional generations into your book. And there's also a an add family tree as well, um, which we didn't talk about today because that's for uh, an additional webinar when we have a little more time. Um, but there's also 
that feature where you can add a, a whole nother family tree. So you're able to add generations that way. Perfect. Yeah, I think some of the Q&A questions have like gotten my wheels turning already that we need to do a webinar that's like advanced tips for photo books because um, you guys have a lot of great ideas and things that you're trying to do in your book that we would love to explain when we have a bit more time. Um, so one more question that we saw come up a few times is that if you update your Ancestry.com account after you've uh, made your photo book, will the information be updated in your photo book? Um, unfortunately, no. Your project is not automatically updated with any of that information. So we really recommend making sure your tree is filled out to the best of your ability and as much information as you want in your book before you start creating your project. Um, I did touch a little bit on a feature we have where if you're starting a new project and you've made changes to your ancestry tree since the last time you've made a project, you're able to refresh your data before continuing on, but that won't make any changes in any existing projects or update anything in existing projects. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so like I said, we have uh, 81 already answered questions in the Q&A box. So um, if you're curious, you wanna read through those, uh, you're welcome to. Um, we are a little, so we've gotten a little bit longer than we expected this to go. So we want to give you um, your time um, and get out of here pretty quickly. But I do want to just say thank you so much for coming to our first webinar. We really hope that you uh, learned a little bit and feel a little more confident to get in there and start making a family history book. Um, we did want to offer a little something. We made the coupon code WEBBY5 um, that it's a little tricky to see that's an I for webinar and then a five. So if you type in Webby five to the coupon box, you'll get $5 off for attending this webinar. We'll also send that information in a follow-up email. So if you forget, uh, we'll get you that coupon code. Um, we'll also include some of the Q and A's that have come up. We can answer them in that email. And if you think of any more questions, you can always email us. It's help at mycanvas.com. Um, You'll get answers from the very same people who've been in this webinar, uh, Janelle and Jasmine and Caitlin typing as fast as they can into that Q&A box. Um, they're experts and they're happy to answer any of your questions anytime. So feel free to reach out. Um, thanks so much for coming. Uh, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we're gonna stop the video and the audio and we'll spend a few more minutes answering some questions in the Q&A um, before it all shuts down. But thank you so much for coming. And we hope you'll come back for another webinar sometime soon.